Hey, Paul. Oh, my. Oh, uh, yeah, I messed up a little bit. For some reason, I scheduled for 4.30, not 4.30, so I had to go live early. So, for live. <laughs> <laughs> Throw me in the deep end, mate. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've not even got my phone set up. <laughs> it's alive. Oh, man. <laughs> How you doing? Not too bad. Hating the day, actually. <laughs> Hating the day? Hectic. Oh, hectic. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, when you try and plan the whole day out, and uh, you end up losing so much time that you have to do everything in the last half hour. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. So uh, just been rushing around getting my uh, markers refilled just in case they run out. Oh, right. You're a marker boy. I am a marker boy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so let me uh, add some people or invite some people for a second. Okay, we got uh, Sean Forney's on. Says hi. What's up, Sean? Oh, hey. hey, Sean. You know, do you know who he is? A little bit familiar with his work. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a great guy. Um, ba, 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 and some things. Okay, we're hitting everywhere. Okay, so I'm um, your Facebook is Paul Hill Art, right? Yeah, that's right. And Paul uh, Paul J Hill underscore Art on Instagram. That's correct. Yeah. I'm just running it on the at the bottom of the stream. Just make sure I spell everything right. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, thanks for doing this. Thanks for fitting me in into your hectic day. <laughs> That's not bad. We've only had it planned, what, a week, week and a half? Uh, no, longer than that. We tried to get right. <laughs> I know you've been trying to get me in a lot longer than that. Mm -hmm. uh, Playing hard to get, what can I say? That's okay. Some <laughs> things are worth waiting for, right? Um, I hope so. <laughs> so, uh, as people uh, hop into the chat, um, uh, hopefully, uh, some more people come in. Um, so, Paul Hill, sketch card artist and illustrator, cartoonist, all around nice guy. Wow. Uh -oh. <laughs> So you've been uh, well. Actually, first of all, what are you uh, what are you working on there? Um, I decided to do a spider carnage piece. Spider carnage. All right. Mm. And that's just for uh, shits and giggles. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, if uh, anyone wants to buy it off me, yeah, once I've finished it, that's uh, I'm open for offers. Right on. But, uh, yeah, I thought I'd uh, do this. For uh, this stream, sounds good. Uh, now I've I've watched your live, not your live stuff, but like your hyperlapse videos, and it looks oh, like yeah. you work pretty fast. Um, how long does it take you to do a piece? <laughs> Are you talking in between uh, sorting family members and uh, children and everything else out? <laughs> uh, depends. Um, I mean, sketch card wise, I can uh, color a sketch card. It might take me an hour. Okay. Pencil, pencils and inks don't take me that long at all. Once I've got an idea in my head, I can get that down straight away. But uh, I've never really timed myself, if I'm honest. <laughs> so, you know, uh, some, some are easier to get through than others. Yeah. Well, I guess that depends on what it is that you're, uh, what you're working on, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. So, so, uh, hey, and uh, you've been doing sketch cards for for a while now, right? Like, what was your first? Set? Yeah, I started. Uh, my first set was Marvel Premiere, two thousand seventeen. Okay, it seems um, like almost everyone that I talk to started uh, on two thousand seventeen Premiere. Seventeen Premiere, yeah, and they got 
for the most part, they got recruited, if you will, just off Instagram. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if I got seen on Instagram, but um, I know I was contacted through my Facebook page. Okay. Um, that was how how I was contacting it. Was because uh, I noticed a lot of um, fellow artists had been uh, announcing, oh, "I'm working for Upper Deck." And I'm like, What's that? So um, I know about sketch cards, but you know, not the official side of it. Yeah. Or how to get into it. So did you actively seek them out, or? Oh, what's uh, what's the? Do I get into it? Next thing you know, I get contacted, and I'm like, all right, you know, take it on. <laughs> do it. Yeah. So. Not like me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so premiere 17 and what else uh, that you can talk about? Don't, don't mention anything. They're not allowed to talk about. Oh God. Right. Okay. Um, so started on premiere 17, uh, then it was, I believe it was, uh, Marvel infinity war set, uh, around, uh, Deadpool Marvel 10th anniversary. Uh, I'm trying to think after that, I know I've done Spider Man Far From Home. I've done I've done a lot of the um, later movie sets. I think I missed the odd set here and there. But uh, were you on Masterpieces eighteen? No, no, I never got an invite to that. Mm. So, a bit disappointed, but uh, yeah, things things happen, things change. You never know. Yeah, it's it's. I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to the way they uh, invite people to specific sets. No, I think it's just, uh, well, they've got to rotate their artists a little bit, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, they've got that many uh, on books. So uh, they're just kind of going through the list, I guess. Yeah. So, I'm sure my time will come on Masterpieces or any other uh, big name sets in future. You never know. Did you do Premiere 19? I didn't. Uh, they skipped me. Yeah. Um, I think I think we were doing something else at the time, um, sketch card-wise for them. I can't, oh, okay. think, I can't think for the heart of me what I was doing. I mean, I've done, um, you know, besides Marvel sets for a deck, I did some of the uh, Goodwin Champion sets. Okay. So I tried uh, my hand at some of them. Uh, Fairy Tales was one of them. So, uh, a little different from Capes and Cows. Yeah, less men in tights. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... so you have a very um, defined style. <laughs> right? Like, it, it's on the, yeah, I'm going to call it the cartoony side, and that's not a. That's not an so. not, not an, I, I, you never know. Some people take that as an offense, but more in the cartoon um, cartoon style, but still very well defined. I mean, um, I know looking at conversations and uh, through forums and groups and stuff, you get you and Gordon Wills get uh, confused sometimes. Yeah, well, like the uh, twin brothers that got separated at birth. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I can tell. Um, I can tell you guys the part in a second. Can say what's a Paul Hill and what's a Gordon piece. Um, oh yeah, there's a um, good distinguishing difference between our styles, even though we've got similar um, influences. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, I mean, it was uh, it was Gar Gordon originally that got me into uh, interested in sketch cards. Okay. Um, I just happened to um, be looking through Instagram and uh, found some of his old uh, Batman animated sketch cards that he did. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, that's where my style tends to originate from. Uh, so that spoke to me quite straight away. So I um, started liking stuff, started following Gordon and um, chatting about all things Batman animated and Struck up a really good friendship, and uh, we've kind of been 
you know, when he joined uh, Upper Deck for um, Premier, I did the same thing, just a little bit later on. Yeah, because um, he, yeah, he was brought on for 17 as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been, we've been chasing each other on sketch card duty uh, ever since. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it anyway. it's. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we do bounce a lot of great ideas. We've become good friends, I like to say. So who's your influences? You said that you guys share a lot of the same. Um, so, obviously, I mentioned Batman the Animated Series, so Bruce Tim. Yeah. Um, that animated show. The... Um, Sean Galloway from uh, who did the designs for Spectacular Spider-Man. Um, other than that, uh, comic book influences have been Mark Bagley, John Romita Jr. Anything that's sort of like a simple cartoony sort of style, I, mm -hmm. te I tend to lean a lot towards. Um, me, when I first started drawing, uh, I was more comic book, you know, trying to follow the comic book artist sort of route. Um, but I guess what happened there was a sort of, I kind of got comfortable with the idea that, you know, I'll never be a comic book artist with the heavy inks and the um, anatomy or anything like that. But I'm really good as a, cartoonist with the slight exaggerations yeah sorry there's uh jaylen warner saying sweet it's art of gordon wills <laughs> he's gonna yeah. troll you with this forever what do you mean he's not already <laughs> <laughs> oh if he hasn't already yeah <laughs> sorry I interrupted you no 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 it's cool um yes yeah, so you're saying um the heavy inks, dark line, like superior anatomy wasn't your cup of tea, if you will? Not really, no. Um, I try and simplify it a little bit more than what a lot of uh, other artists that are in that industry tend to do. But, you know, like you say, I mean, it's cartoony art styles, not everyone's cup of tea, so uh, I tend to um, do... I got um, comfortable and happy with just being labelled as a cartoonist, if you will. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I put, I put the paint paintbrush in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to open a, a container of medium, and I needed both hands. Um, uh -huh. Sorry, yeah, you were saying... Uh, Labeled as a cartoonist? Yeah. Yeah. I've just embraced that labeling and gone with it. You know, it's uh, nothing to be ashamed of. It's it's an art style at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely. It's not, like I said before, I can know some people take offense to being called cartoonist or having a cartoon-like style. Mm. But that's... Yeah, cartoonist is an honorable title, as uh, Jim Lynn is saying. Um, it's nothing to kind of scoff at, right? No, absolutely. I mean, there's uh, plenty of great cartoonists out there that um, well, you, it, you, know, you can follow and you know, they've got a unique style all to themselves and well, I think it was uh, Romita Jr. I was watching an interview with, and he refers to himself as a cartoonist. All right. I think it was him. Um, I, know, I think it's on one of those sci-fi channel, um, uh, YouTube channel things, mm. where they interview an artist as they draw something. Pretty much like this, then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe uh, with slightly higher viewership. <laughs> <laughs> Should send Jay Warner out there and uh, sandwich, but just promoting us a bit more. Yeah. 
conjoined with a crazy cartoonist. <laughs> <laughs> So are you a collector as well? Uh, what, sketch cards or just collecting? Uh, in, in, in general. In general. Do you collect stuff? Uh, I do collect stuff. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a massive collector. Um, I've got a collection of Batman animated figurines. Okay. I mean, that's, that's my main passion at uh, this point because I do collect a lot of comic books as well. And figurines, not uh, action figures, right? Yeah. Like tomato, tomato, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, well, I, don't, I don't play with them, let's put it that way. I'm not going, I don't play with them. <laughs> I actually do buy them for myself and not for the kids. They can have their own. Uh, but uh, mine are safely behind a cabinet. Oh, right on. On display, so, yeah. Do you have that um, Magnola um, Batman statue? Oh, the Mag no, no, I've not got that one. Grayscale uh, one? Yeah, I, remember, I know which one you mean. Um, I've been looking for the uh, Sean Galloway one that he did quite some years back, but it's pretty much uh, done and gone, I think. Yeah, that's that sold out fast. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I'm not. I do. I uh, I do like Magnolia's stuff, but I'm not a massive fan of it. If that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, so, it's 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 not for everyone. No, I mean, he has got his uh, good side, and uh, you know, with what he can do with anatomy, and uh, you know, his uh, designs of monsters are. Uh, Really interesting in his idea of, even though it's a cartoony style, he's just really good with his shadow. Uh, yeah. Light, you know, heavy inks and what have you. So, uh, Ro sorry, Robin Fuller on YouTube says, Paul, you sound so British. I have a feeling that that's you. a joke. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I hope I do sound British. <laughs> and for Decker, you are British. I am indeed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we've been to a few places around the world, but uh, I've never picked up any different accents and not stayed long enough. So, do you do art for a living? Uh, it's uh, not my main. It's not my main thing. Um, I work in advertising as a designer so just a creative field yeah yeah still creative field yeah, uh, to be fair i've not really been drawing that long oh okay well that, that was gonna be my follow-up questions it's like are you classically trained uh no <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not in the traditional sense now, if if my art teacher knew what um, knew that I was drawing like this, I'd probably get a slap on the wrist. <laughs> I used to <laughs> in school all the time. You shouldn't be drawing in cartoony style. It's got to be this way, life drawing, and uh, you know, chalks and paints and you know. yeah. Don't get me wrong. I had to follow that just to get uh, you know the uh, right grade, but. Uh, the minute I didn't have to, that was it. Uh, so I, I don't know if you've ever, if, how many of the streams you tuned in, but a lot of the times Brian uh, Rust pops in and he, he watches with his daughter Scarlett. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's watching now. So we generally say, hi, Scarlett. Hi, yes, Scarlett. Hi, being, <laughs> being acknowledged. Um, no, yeah, there's a couple of people that watch with their kids when they're on. So it's... Yeah, I believe Robin Fuller's got her daughter on as well. Mm. Hey, Robin. Um, and uh, Tommy, I um, can't remember his last summer. Usually when he watches, he watches with his kids. But I don't think he's on today. 
Uh, I'm really reserved with the language, so it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, <laughs> if I wouldn't have messed up the schedule, um, that to usually get on a couple of minutes earlier and just get all the stilliness out of the system. But because I did mess up the schedule and it went 10 minutes early, I got to get it out of my system by myself. <laughs> there was a lot of yeah. uh, short he was words. Doing... Yeah. Well, he was I, doing I that. Up... <laughs> yeah, I opened up StreamYard and it says going live in 14 seconds. I was like, what? <laughs> then I had some words. Then I messaged you. <laughs> yeah, I saw the messages and I'm like, oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, I was already uh, using expletives, filling my uh, markers up. And I'm like, I'm right. running out of time here. <laughs> well, the, the reason I like to use StreamYard, well, there's a couple of reasons. And like, I'm not sitting here trying to promote StreamYard in any way. It's just it's been a really good service. Mm -hmm. Is one, the way I do it is I, I host a meeting off my computer. And yep. then join on the phone um, as a user, same way you would or anybody else that gets uh, like that. I want to invite. So then, uh, if anything happens with the phone connection, because I had cases where I forgot to plug the phone in and the battery died, the stream doesn't cut out. It's still running. It's just that one user drops up. That's one. And then the other one is that it lets you multicast to multiple channels. So that's why we're live on Facebook, uh, YouTube. And as of this week, they let you do a third one. So trying Twitch again. But I have no idea how Twitch works. So I don't know if anyone ever <laughs> is ever watching uh, any of my posts on Twitch. But they're there now. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say, is there anyone in the group that actually uses Twitch or watches Twitch? Um, it's not there's something some I've never tried. I mean, th that's a platform that I believe started off off gaming. Yeah. And that's its core purpose for um, to watch people play, like you know, walk through, play through videos or whatever. But, you know, especially because Jim Lee is such a big advocate of Twitch now because he's he does all the stuff on Twitch. He's got all his, his live streams and auctions and charity stuff and tutorials and whatever. Um, I think that just opened that platform to artists as well. Um, and it just evolves. But it might be for a younger generation. Um, I'm not, I don't know how old you are, but you have kids, so you're not 17. Thanks, it could be, but <laughs> no. probably not. I wish. <laughs> in spirit, well, right? It definitely in spirit. Uh, yes, I'm uh, one year off 40. Oh. <laughs> I just hit 42 months ago, and I uh, my knees are starting to hurt. <laughs> um, I... Uh, my fiance, when she reached status, says, "That's it." Now says, "Now comes all the aches and pains." <laughs> so, uh, wait and so see what forty has for me. <laughs> back pain. Um, well, I hope not. <laughs> uh, so Jalen Warner joined a little late, so he's asking again. Uh, are the UD cards the only set you work on? What sets have you done? When did you start? You want to give him the penny tour? Yeah, okay. So Upper Deck is one of the main contractors, I guess is the word. Um, 2017 Premier is when I started. I, uh, I've done more movie sets for Upper Deck Marvel than uh, the you know, masterpieces are premiere since then. Um, I've done the Deadpool set from 2018, Infinity War, Endgame, 10th anniversary for the MCU, Spider Man Far From Home. Uh, I've worked for uh, uh, Richard Parks on RR Parks cards doing Ultraman. 
So that was the uh, first set away from Upper Deck. And I did the Island Dreams charity set. Okay. So, and uh, I guess I can say I've recently signed a contract with uh, Cryptozoic as well. Oh, right on. Are you working on any uh, UD sets right now? Uh, no, I've just finished one actually. Oh, okay. Uh, I could probably guess which one that is. Yeah, I'm so, yeah, I'm going to say there's a few being running actually, aren't they? Uh, yeah. A few Without of them went into too many details. details. Yeah, <laughs> a couple of them with some very weird uh, design choices on the card stock. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> I can only imagine which ones you mean by that. <laughs> <laughs> If you if you worked on them, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. there's, a lot of, yeah. there's a lot of white colors. <laughs> and I had issues with one of the sets that I last worked on. Um, more for the colors, positionings, the logos, what have you. Yeah. Without going into too much details, but once you see the cards finished, you know, with the colors and you know the characters. As long as you put some kind of dynamic or interesting pose on them, you can usually get around the whole idea of the logos. But, you know, once um, once I started finishing a few of the cards, I started thinking, yeah, they actually look quite good once, you know, once they're finished off. So quite proud of the last set. And looking forward to it being released. Yeah, I kind of get lucky like that sometimes because I like I do everything in paint. Yeah. So every now and then I'll just cover the whole card in paint. So you don't <laughs> see any more logos because they'll just drive me nuts. I try to work around them and kind of incorporate them or make that part of the design but sometimes I just like, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to cover the whole thing in paint. You can't see anything. I've done that on APs as well. We ended up covering the full AP. Like the silver foil. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, some people care, some people don't. But. No, it, it can be tricky. depends on so, uh, where you design lands. You know, some card stock, you know, like for markers, uh, some of the card stocks I've used in the past, you know, the markers have bled. Yeah. Um, I'm very good at layering my markers. Uh, that's how I get a lot of my effects which is pretty much sort of like saturating the card a little bit. Yeah, but you, you go uh, pretty thick with your layers, right? Uh, not always, but yeah, I can do that on odd occasion. <laughs> what, to get that color done? Yeah. Like that, uh, uh, I don't remember where I saw you posted it. It was that... Uh, I think it was a Far From Home AP where it's Mysterio and then Spider-Man's reflecting in his dome. Oh, yeah. Or in his fishbowl. Yeah. Um, it might have been on YouTube. But that seemed to have a lot of layers on most of it, not so much on the on the dome because obviously you're keeping it light. Mm -hmm. But imagine that had some, might have had some bleed through to the back. None if I remember. <laughs> What, what tends to happen is if you use, with markers, if you use dark colors, like really strong, uh, bold, dark colors, they're the ones that tend to bleed through. But if you use a lot of a lighter mix, um, they don't tend to bleed through as much unless you're really, really going at it to get that blend. Mm -hmm. um, but the Spider-Man stuff was really good, actually. Uh, so I didn't get as much in the way of bleed through. Now I'll probably get a ton of people that's got my card saying, hey, it's bled through the back of this. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's part of the charm of sketch cards, I would imagine, is the fact that you can, like, you see, I mean, it's not a printed piece, right? You see the color on the edges and the bleed through and whatnot. Uh, 
I like to think, you know, I, well, every, everyone comments whenever I do sketch cards, whether it's the pencils, the inks, uh, the colours always. It's either very bright, striking colours I use or um, the inks are very clean, you know, quite thick in a sort of, like, well, the animated or animation sort of styling or cell animation. Yeah, the hard, uh, hard edges. Well, not hard edges. Uh, defined edges. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, don't know if uh, I go a little bit away from it when I'm doing uh, the coloring because I tend to do it more of like a. Even though it's markers, it. I think someone's actually commented and said, "Do I use acrylics?" Might have been you. <laughs> um, the idea of it, because it looks almost like a painty style. You know, the yeah, and that, that's, why, that's why I said it looks like you lay down a lot of layers of uh, marker. Mm -hmm. Get that, that depth, which kind of looks more like paint. Which is a good thing, right? Yeah, it's, it, it is a good thing. Uh, it's, um, I, I think I started experimenting with my colours when I was doing the Deadpool set, actually. Um, found a artist on Instagram called Dan Hip. Um, he's done the... Um, Go on the Teen Titans Go cartoon. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, even though he's he's worked on it, his style is slightly different from that cartoon. Uh, though he has got some of his own artwork influences in the show itself, if you ever watch it. Um, but he uses really extreme colours when he's uh, colouring his uh, pieces. Uh, for the life of me, I don't know if he uses digital or if it's markers or even pencil crane. It's uh, an odd one to try and figure out at times. Just ask him. <laughs> um, but, well, yeah. the main reason, you know, the take home for me was, you know, he's using um, bright reds and bright yellows, you know, really extreme colours. They're not subtle. And uh, that was the main reason why I started like, looking at his work and I was thinking, oh, I wonder what would happen if I mixed those colours together. And um, you know, all of a sudden I've got these really vibrant pieces. But you know, you don't uh, you don't know what the result's going to be unless you don't unless you try. Yeah, you got to give it a shot. Some things work, some things don't. Exactly. It's like um, this thing that I'm working on here that I'm just... Galactus. Yeah, Galactus and the Surfer too, but um, I've never painted on Masonite. All right. And I started this last summer at some point. I did the pencils and did some of the... started doing a little bit of the blacks. Mm -hmm. And I really should have just gave up and gessoed it and started over, but I really want to understand what I'm doing wrong. Right, so. so where did you uh, pick that up from? Is it uh, an artist that you follow or you just wanted to try the material? Um, I was at Michael's and I walked through Michael's. I don't know if you have it. It's a craft and arts supply store. Uh, we went don't, to pick but... up yeah, like Hobby Lobby or what, whatever, one of those chains. Um, yeah. So I was at Michael's, and I ended up in their clearance aisle, and they had Masonite boards for 50 cents. So I said, hey, you know what? I've never tried Masonite. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what the big deal is. Because um, they're usually like 15 bucks, I think. Mm. Um, so... It never really appealed to me to try it, but I'm like, oh, you're not for 50 cents. I could try this. Um, 
Yeah, it's, Can... it's all about trial and error, isn't it? At the end of the day, what what works for you, and you never know the res what results you get. You know, yeah, and then what people might lean people... towards. Uh, sorry, I'm just saying uh, people might lead towards you know that sort of style that you've uh, been doing. And it gives you something to look towards, I suppose, for future projects. Yeah, like I said, I don't think I'll probably ever do a Masonite or like just this. Or... <laughs> well, no, just based on the hard time that I'm having with this. But I think because I've seen uh, quite a few artists paint a Masonite, but they just saw it themselves. So you still get that gesso texture. This is a very smooth, like almost sim not synthetic, but like commercial gesso. So nothing sticks to it. And I use I like to use a lot of water, a lot of medium. Um, mm. And it's just like, I don't know if you can see my screen, but like if I do a stroke, it's like painting on wax and I'll just go right off. When, so how do you get it to stick or is that? what you're still trying uh, to figure out that's what i'm still trying to figure out so then now i'm instead of using water i'm trying to use uh, uh, glazing medium which has a tack to it um which is sort of working but i, I need still to do all now. yeah it's not really sticking the way it, it would on paper uh, Robin Fuller says, Howdy from Serenity and I. Howdy, Robin. Howdy, Serenity. Hey, Robin. Hey, Serenity. Of a um, woman and daughter team. And Robin says she watches artists on Twitch. So there. Some people use them. Some people watch Twitch. Well, obviously they do because otherwise it wouldn't be around. <laughs> so are you um currently open for commissions are you taking yeah, uh, requests i i take requests i've got a bit of a um list gathering at the minute but uh, i'm always willing to take no requests under the understanding that obviously people are joining a, a bit of a queue. Yeah, it won't be and too long. <laughs> no. Uh, you know, whenever we get uh, new contracted sets come in, everything gets put on hold a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, luckily, I've got a client base that actually understands that. I've got a few pieces that I need to be working on. And you have um, APs available, or is that all gone? Um, I've got a few left uh, out of the stock that I've got at the minute. Um, I believe I've got two endgame APs left. Otherwise, it's um, the fairy tale set from the Good Wings Champions. Stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can imagine, the Marvel stuff goes pretty quick. Yeah. Um, the, uh, well, higher demand for those things, right? Sorry? Uh, there's a higher demand for the Marvel pieces versus uh, the, tables or fairy tales or any of those. Definitely higher demand than the fairy tales ones. I don't really tend to push those. In fact, I haven't really been pushing the Marvel ones. People have been getting in touch with me, and it's been a case of, what you got? What's your prices? Can you do them with this? Right. Um, so I've not really had to push much at all recently. It's been kind of good, kind of crazy at the same time, <laughs> just because I'm not used to it. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so you, you mentioned your the line work and you know, how people comment on your lines. Yeah. You have really, really 
uh, solid, like confident lines. I'm just watching you ink the hand <laughs> there. You're saying that I'm sweating buckets here trying to do this without making a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very aware that I'm live doing this. <laughs> See, what no, I tend to do, yeah, what I tend to do is I tend to layer my line work as well. It's something that I got told by a tattooist of all things, and also I learned that to a lot of cartoonists do that as well, especially with like retro cartoons, you know, that sort of styling. So, what does that mean? It, it basically means like um, you know when you see a comic strip that's just black and white and you see the heavy lines you know it's not usually a single thin line you know like what I've got on my screen at the minute it's just a single thin line uh, I'm just using extra small thin nib you know mm -hmm. the Faber Castell pit pen um, but as I'm building up like this line weight, um, that'll depend on where the light hits the, the figure, uh, where the shadows land. So, uh, like where the shadows are, the lines would be a little bit thicker. Um, oh, okay. So, he'll... You... so you do multiple strokes to thicken it. You don't press harder on the nib. Yeah. Uh, oh God, me. That's probably the thickest I go, which is um, brush nib. I'll just take it out. So. Okay. Um, I mean, that's probably why my videos for him can probably take a bit longer than they should. <laughs> so you'll see me go over once, twice, three, four, five times. Brush my mouth again. Um, it works, right? And it's a good result. The final, um, the final product looks good. So it doesn't matter that it takes longer, right? Or longer? Oh no, absolutely. I like the. I mean, for me, it just brings the figure out a lot stronger than. So the backgrounds are probably not use as thick of line weight. You know, so that then when you're looking at the figure, he's sort of like they're jumping out of um, the panel rather than, you know, being part of the same image. Right. Or at least that's how I see it. Um, uh, do you know James Ray's is? Uh, doesn't ring a bell, no. Box office artist on YouTube? Uh, no, I'm still new to YouTube, so oh, I've okay. not really gone through it. <laughs> no worries. Um, he's um, he, he did some comic, did some, he does a lot of Transformer stuff, or used to do a lot of Transformer stuff. I'm not sure what he does now. Um, but he has kind of a hybrid cartoony slash comic book style. Uh, where um, he'll have a great likeness to, I mean, box office artist. So he, most of the stuff that he does is like movie based. Um, but he has a very interesting way of inking, and he explained a couple of times in some of his videos how he approaches the thick and thin. Um, right. Can't remember it offhand because I don't ink often enough, but. It's interesting because he, he's one of the guys that will do like the thick outline around the main piece, but then also go thick on certain components within um, the composition to give that that same, same way as you do. Uh, I think he has a slightly different approach as to how he's defining things. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's interesting. Oh, no, he's... It's an interesting way of uh, doing it. Um, I said uh, I mentioned earlier, retro cartooning tends to use a lot of thick lines to um, sort of make their characters stand out. Com usually, get a lot of thick outlines for the character. It doesn't matter where the light or shadow tends to be; they just tends to be one thick line, and then 
any inner detail of the character will be quite uh, a thinner weight, uh, whether it's a jacket or button or out like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there is uh, different ways of doing it. Oh, yeah, and there's different approaches for different effects. So, Jalen wants to know if you ever tried using brushes for inking. Uh, no, don't like brushes. Sorry. <laughs> there, you've been told. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, now, I said it before. My uh, art teacher tried to get me to, in fact, I was, I was doing like um, my A level degree in art. Um, be like early college, I guess, for you guys. And um, she uh, she told me I weren't allowed to use anything other than paintbrush for the duration of the course. Oh. <laughs> uh, which, you know, I rose to the challenge. I did what I wanted. Well, I did what was expected of me, but didn't really enjoy it. So that was the end of your brush work? I've tried picking it up on odd occasion, but I just don't have the same uh, love for it as I do with markers. Um, now, uh, when I was at university, as a design, learning to be a designer, I used a lot of um, pro markers in my design work. Yeah, uh, it was basically it were an easy way to sort of like sketch out your ideas and. Uh, make them look uh, presentable. So um, I learned to use pro markers then. And I think it was in a, I went to a Comic Con about 2014, I think. And I got talking to a British indie artist there. And I was looking at what he was doing commission wise and, you know, he was using copy markers and, you know, uh, Wow, that's kind of the same sort of stuff I used to do at university. Yeah, well, why don't I uh, pick that up again and start relearning how to do drawing using them? And here I am, what, six years later? Doing Spider Man. Doing Spider Man with markers. Um, oh, about Spider Man, you're involved in that webhead wednesday thing yeah yeah it's uh, something i decided to do to keep developing my digital skills but i wanted to try and you know get as many artists involved as possible oh so that that's your uh, brainchild the the idea of doing the art post every wednesday is yes um the hashtag was something a podcast um, started using. I tried to uh, use that hashtag. And I basically adopted the hashtag for um, that purpose. Uh, I don't know if you've seen some of the po some of the posts I have actually tags in the the, um, the podcast because I'm doing um, the web heavy Wednesday, although. You can do any Spider-Man drawing or if you've got an artist that you like, you can post that. You know what I mean? It's not about just being an artist. If you're a fan of yeah, Spider-Man, post above. your favourite piece of art uh, by your favourite artist. Um, my reasoning for doing it was, um, like I said, to get other artists involved. And uh, it was just to keep my digital skills because uh, I wanted to keep doing that and I wanted a, a reason to do it rather or not a reason an excuse to keep doing it and keep driving that forward right so, uh, you know uh, doing sketch cards I'm always doing traditional work which is great no problem with that but uh, you know got to learn new skills somewhere so right. it kind of forces my hand you know I've got um, got something I can do so you know, get on with it and do it. Yeah, I think I took part. Well, not took part. I tagged. Uh, yeah, the Green Goblin, parts. weren't it? 
Uh, yeah, because it just happened that I actually finished it on a Wednesday or I was going to post it on a Wednesday. I was like, hey, I can actually <laughs> partake this time. Yeah, I, I said it to one of uh, one of the other guys that did a piece for me. He's been doing three weeks on Instagram. I said to him, it doesn't matter if it's an unfinished piece. It can be a Spider-Man piece. It can be black and white. It can be anything. Just, you know, just post just it. Spider-Man theme. Yeah, just a Spider-Man theme. Um, I always said if you tag me into it, I'll put the hashtag. I'll do my best to put you in my stories. So it's a bit of a shout-out for any artist as well. Yeah, and I saw, I know um, Jason Montoya, he's like been on it every he's, He really loves it. Yeah, he's like gone ho on that. <laughs> um, and some of the, I mean, I, I think I follow a lot of the people that partake in it. It just kind of seems to be a very um, tight knit community that once you start discovering the a couple of sketch card artists. You kind of find the rest of them. Yeah, um, I know. As soon as people start uh, promoting sets that they've done, it's like, oh, it's a fellow sketch card artist there. I'll, you know, I'll uh, click the follow button pretty much straight away, and I can see what they're doing. And you know, they can. Well, most of the time, they tend to follow you back as well. Um, you know, we become quite a bit of a small community. Uh, always interesting to bounce ideas off each other. Yeah. It's um, the entire, um, like the, the sketch card community and even the collector community. I don't know how uh, how active you are within the um, uh, the Marvel car collectors group or the Masterpieces group. Uh, just such a nice group of people for the most part. And same thing with the uh, sketch card groups that like i know some of the groups that i'm in you're in as well um, yeah and there's always drama but uh you can't avoid that but just everybody's so nice and supportive and encouraging yeah no that's uh, yeah that's true i've uh, made some good friends at the um, sketch card you know the marvel collectors group especially being uh, um really kind and you know welcoming in that regards and yeah, and then um, you and Norin are just so great. Have you um, um, have you done an intro for their podcast? I have, yeah. Uh, yeah I think uh, I think mine was around February. I can't remember what episode it was now. So now I was, I was laughing at um, Ian's description of. Um, one of my social media bios. Okay. <laughs> um, I, th I think he fumbled as well on the uh, whole cartoony sort of style of my uh, artwork as well, which was uh, quite amusing at the time. Um, so I think, I'm pretty sure, um, my very first sketch card is yours, or from you, or like the very first sketch card I got. Because I'm I'm not a collector, um, but it's kind of hard to avoid the temptation sometimes. So I bought a couple of packs of something, and I don't know what anything is. So then somebody wanted to trade, and I said, "No, I don't want to trade for that. Let me see some sketch cards." And they had your. Thanos. Was it Thanos? I believe it was. I've yeah. uh, done quite a few of him uh, in a lot of the sets. So I try um, one of the uh, the last set I did, I actually put a call out in one of the groups and said, is there a character request that people want me to do? And someone said Thanos, and I just like, no, I can't. I just can't do any more Thanos. <laughs> you know, and nothing against the character, but, you know, after a while, you know, I need some fresh blood. <laughs> yeah, I had a little bit of a joke with him about it, yeah, and uh, you know, I've I've done quite a few versions of him. I think the last one was Endgame, actually. Yeah, I just brought up on my screen the one I have is the tenth anniversary Thanos, the one that I think you said he's hungry for Doritos. 
<laughs> yeah. In our conversation, so I was very like very tickled to get it. Um, yeah, I've had, I've got him a few times for uh, commission requests as well, sketch cards. Uh, yeah, he's not he's not a bad character to draw. I just I love drawing the um, jawline and the head, but because he's such a big character, you know, um, very akin to like build of the Hulk, at least yeah. in my head anyway. You know, trying to fit something like that on a sketch card, so many different ways. Um, so, can be a bit tricky at times. You know, trying to come up with something new. Yeah, we can only do so many busts. Yeah, um, I think I think there's only yours that he's not wearing the glove. If I'm right. Uh, no, you just see a couple of blue fingers. Yeah, so he's not wearing the glove on that one. Well, it was before Endgame. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it, it all makes sense. So, is there a character that um, you or what's your go-to character? You have to bang out a card last minute. Oh, tough one. It's a toss up between Captain America or Hulk. And why is that? You just more... Well, and we Hulk, he's such an easy character. There's no costume really. He's just um, blocks, you know, shoulders, chest muscles, ripped trousers, unkept hair. You know, he's, there's not a massive deal to him, so it's quite an easy one to block out. Mm -hmm. You know, um, with his shapes before you start defining the character. Uh, Captain America was a bit surprised, actually. I enjoyed drawing him as much as I do, because he's not, or he wasn't, he didn't used to be, sorry, I'll say that again. Uh, he didn't used to be a go-to character for me. You know, I weren't that interested in him or uh, his rogues gallery or anything like that. But uh, in recent years, after drawing him for so long, I've kind of enjoy sort of like it becomes almost like a challenge with the colours as well. You know, everyone thinks red, white, and blue. Um, I had a word with the fellow sketch card artist other other week about it. And I said, I don't put much blue in Captain America. I start off with green. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, well, most if you've seen any of my colouring videos, um, I usually start with like a yellow base coat or colour and then sort of like build the layers up from that. Oh, so you do like a yellow underpainting? Yeah. yeah. And um, like I just see it as, well, I can go like a light blue, which usually goes sort of like a greeny colour. But then I think about the extremes and go for like a bluey green. So it's almost like, well, military colours, but still you're looking at the... Uh, and then I'll build up to the blue, you know, with uh, shadows and layering. So sometimes the green's almost lost there, but... Uh, Oh, I sorry, I totally missed Claro's on on YouTube. I was looking at the wrong screen. Yes, hello. Who he says he had no idea you had a British accent. Who's this? <laughs> uh, Harold. Harold. Oh, Harold. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, they just me talking to him today. So they weren't UK. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, sorry, I'm just going through the comments. Um, yeah, he said he drew a Thanos card with three fingers on one hand. Didn't even notice. <laughs> well, I'm sure somebody's going to point it out now. Um, uh, that would be a rare Hawkins. find if someone picks it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Haro also says that the Hulk is easier to draw for him. At the same time, Jalen says Hulk is very hard for him to draw for some reason. Um, See, that's interesting. I'd love to. Yeah, I have a I have a hard time with the Hulk too. 
Really? I don't know. Why. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why. And not, not so much with the body. I can do a big muscle bound person. It's just the head. Um, is they, the way I draw. I try to keep more of a realistic. Uh, realistic proportions try to make it more believable and mm. uh, you can't like if you do a giant body with a normal size head it looks like a peanut <laughs> right so like <laughs> I have a hard time with it um, but on that note so that that's your go-to who do you not hate because nobody really hates a drawing any specific character but when somebody asks you to draw, hey, can you do me an AP of this this so and so, and it makes you cringe? I've not had that yet. Squirrel girl. I'm sure I'll get it. squirrel girl. I've never drawn her. Yeah. See, any character that I've never drawn, I tend to have a bit of time to try and study how I would draw them. Um. That is how, uh, what I tend to do. I think the biggest thing I hate is trying to put too much detail, especially on sketch cards. But then sometimes uh, certain characters do require it. At least in my head anyway. Like uh, I'll give you an example. Um, most sketch cards with Spider-Man... I'd try and keep them where he's so I got a cityscape behind him as much as possible. And it's not always possible, but uh, he just keeps that kind of, because he's got that kind of dynamic. Unless you're doing a really, uh, really close up version of him. Yeah. But, that, but to me, if, although close ups are good, if you do um, too close, then you kind of lose the. Uh, appeal of what that character is, you know, with the whole gymnastics and you know, the flailing arms and legs. I mean, it, it works with some characters, but not, not Spider Man. If you just kind of see his eyes and some webbing, it kind of loses it, right? Yeah, yeah. I had um, I had a commission for a crystal a while back, I posted it since it's on uh, social media. And um, that was the first time I'd draw her. That's um, from Inhuman. She's got a yellow band in her hair. That's the one? Yeah, that's the one. Well, she wears a um, yellow and leotard. She's, there's not much to her costume or like uh, trying to get her powers in. So it was a case of, right, how do you make this character look like the character? Because I could have easily drawn, you know, um, slight upper body head and um, that's not even even to me as uh, you know i was doing it as a commissioner like, that does not sound interesting to me the person who wants it not be interested either right. so i had to think of a way to try and get as much of her body in as i could and if i could get the you know the hands with the abilities activated then again bonus Oh, and she's got like fire and ice, right, or something like that. Yeah, elemental abilities. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, Gordon was uh, the one that kind of he does it where he does a lot of his characters from the corner. He doesn't tend to do them top to bottom. If you ever see some of his sketch card work, so he might yeah. do them from one corner to the next, so they're at an angle. As oh, yeah, into yeah. the card, yeah, yeah. So that's like, well, that's totally different idea of how you can angle your cards, and it's very similar to the 60s Batman TV series. You know, how they used to have the uh, flaws at an angle for, to show crooked villains, yeah, or beyond know, drunken camera work, yeah. yeah. So, um yeah, I've picked up a few tricks. How are you going with the Galactus? Low and steady? <laughs> I got maybe 30 hours to go. <laughs> um, so, I mean, see, I don't know if you, if you can see my screen, but 
So I did the base on the skin tone with glazing medium. So it's starting mm. to dry and it's good. But I did the purple wash here just with water. And now I'm trying to go in and get it stronger. But the you see I'm setting water? Out. Yeah. Which is very, very strange for acrylic. I, I can actually wash off what I did, which is telling me that it's not sticking. So, I mean, it could, it makes for a really cool effect. But uh, I don't highlights by just rubbing out the paint. Like this is this is unreal. <laughs> I have some choice words <laughs> for this one. And I, I was having the same challenge when I was trying to do the blacks. Um, and I'm sure they'll scrape right off. Yeah. So. So is the black acrylic as well? Yeah, it's all like, well, it's just a pencil and then it's just black acrylic on top. I did some edging with um, with this pilot Japanese thing that actually um, uh, Gordon told me about, so it's pretty good. And I'm trying to remember which edge I did. I'll see if that's scraping up. Yeah, that's also scraping up. So um, it's definitely the treatment on the board. So I'm not sure what's the best. Is that the same on both sides then? I wonder. What? The, the treatment, back is... sorry. Yeah. yeah the back is... It's masonite, right? So the back uh, is. So, yeah. That's what. So I, mean, I could keep on struggling with this, but I think I'm just going to need to get some clear gesso and do a coat or just try. I'm just putting a layer of gloss medium. That's going to take like three days to dry, but you gotta, like you said earlier, you got to try stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, if I ruin it, I ruin it. Yeah, yeah but at least you've learned something from it. Yeah, just burn the masonite, burn it all. <laughs> so have you always worked on in acrylic uh no this is actually a newer thing for me um and the reason i'm doing everything in acrylic i'm just i'm really liking the effect and i want to get better at it um so like the first set i did which is premiere 17 was watercolor and ink and it was very soft washes hmm. um, they didn't really know how to handle like how to approach doing 50 cards or whatever I had to do in such a short period of time um, so I was like okay I'm just gonna do pencils do black outlines and then throw some watercolors on it and um, that was okay I don't love every single card I put out for that set and then um, who does right yeah i mean you can't love all your children the same something um, something like that yeah <laughs> something like that um so yeah and so for premiere i was trying to find okay what's the fastest way i can put out a card and i was watercolor with ink with very loose pencils and they're okay but i don't love them mm. and then uh I remember what the next set was. Uh, but by Masterpieces 18, I think Black Panther was after that. By Masterpieces 18, I started dabbling with acrylic. And I was trying to use them like watercolors, which is not a good idea. Um, because acrylic dries a lot lighter than when it's wet. So it can, depending on how much you put, apply, it can dry really quick as well. Yeah, I mean, well, so, acrylic, yeah. period, like, just dries really quick as a whole, but it'll just dry a lot lighter um, than what it looks like when it's wet. So mm. trying to use it as watercolor did not really work really, really watered down washes. So and then it's kind of trying to find what's the best combination ever since. And I think I'm there, but it depends on the medium, on the, sorry, on the surface as I'm learning with Masonite, that you can't water this down. So, 
see how this works once the gloss layers dry in like three days because gloss medium takes forever to dry for some reason. I want to try oils. Um, when I have time, but I just don't have the time right now. Hmm. I don't know what, like how that would work for doing cards. Um, so maybe not for cards, but for Charles trying to get into doing sketch covers, which is yeah. you know, same idea as a sketch card, but bigger and no approvals and bigger. <laughs> and uh, you can, I mean, there's such a selection of blank sketch covers you can get from any property that you can really build um, or seemingly you can really build um, a portfolio with variety of characters and styles. Yeah, how did you find um, drawing sketch cards on your first set? Did you do them beforehand, or was it like trial by fire when you got your first set? Um, what do you mean? Okay. Um, when when I did my first set, uh, Premiere 17, I'd never touched a sketch card. You know, I'd never drawn that size or anything. Oh, yeah, I, so um, right, I get it. So I, I got introduced to sketch cards, like, I don't know, earlier that year. Yeah. The whole you know, sketch card. So then I started um, posting drawings at that size. Mm. And kind of working at that size. Um, so I had already done a few, but the way I was doing them then is I would do, uh, I do a sketch slightly bigger, then yeah. scan it, and then shrink it down to two and a half by three and a half, and carbon carbon transfer to the sketch card, and that just like okay, that is way too much work, <laughs> right? Especially for base inserts. I still do that with APs. Um, hmm. I I like to uh, unless somebody specifically says they don't want to see the process, I like to do a comp for APs. So I'll work, I can't show the card, but like here's a comp for a sketch card and here's another one. So they're like five by seven size. And then I'll yeah. photo, take these into Photoshop, scale them down to three and a half and then carbon transfer those to the card. And then I, well, two things. One, I get to keep the original sketch so I can reproduce it, but also it's easier to work out the, um, the design uh, and the detail uh, at this size than trying to figure it out all on the sketch card size. Now for actual inserts that go on a set, I'll for the most part just sketch it right on the card and go to paint. Yeah, it's very rare to do any preliminary uh, stuff for um, actual sets I work on. There's just not enough time to sort of like do do that unfortunately um in most cases i mean uh, for doing aps i started doing that where um i will draw out the size of the sketch card itself and oh. try and get the figure to fit that size oh like actually it's two and a half by three and a half inches yeah yeah i'll measure it up i'll um I'll get like a, um, basically the same size as this sheet of paper I'm working on at minute. And I'll just do sort of like a grid, you know, multiple um, card sizes on one sheet. And um, I'll just break it up and just sort of like sketch a character in different poses on each um, card. And uh, what I've been doing is then I'll send it to. Um, client, just to get an idea of what they like. Oh, okay, so yeah, you give them the idea, and then the, then take it forward from there, and then I'll apply it to the actual card. And... Oh, Gordon Will's in the house. What's up, oh. Gordon? He's gone quiet. 
Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm just reading the comments. From your no, no, I said he's gone quiet. <laughs> um, he says, you guys need to show me how to do that carbon transfer thing. Well, that's easy, dude. I'll let this dry for a minute. Um, we need a whole process video on it. Yeah, it takes five seconds. So, wow. Uh, well, no, not, let me grab a sheet of paper. Or whatever, it doesn't need to be a real sheet of paper. So, carbon transfer is you have a drawing. Can you see? Um, so, you do your sketch. Whatever it is, I'm just gonna do this really quick. Normal HB pencil. Well, I'm just sketching something in a blue pencil at this point. Right. Okay. Because um, this is gonna be the original drawing. Yeah. Whatever. So you have your original drawing then you either take the original drawing or you photocopy it or um oh did we lose you no no, no I'm well, you do really really fine lines <laughs> um yeah so then you take your original drawing or a photocopy or you know taking to photoshop print it on smaller mm -hmm. take your paper you print out you flip it over you grab a pencil you cover it back in carbon Then you take your sketch card, in this case, my other piece of paper, you hold it over and with a pen or pencil or whatever you like to use, in this case, I'm gonna grab a pen, you go over the lines that you wanna transfer. So it's like reverse tracing. And then that's what you end up with. Very cool. Learning something right. new. Oh, you didn't know that? No, it's uh, oh. new to me. So, hang on, let me uh, show you the entire, well, I already shipped out the card, but I recently did this guy, doesn't, um, Iceman, so that's, I don't know, like four by five, so that was the original pencil drawing. Yeah. Scanned it into Photoshop, scaled it down, printed it. So there's the printed three and a half by two and a half that I covered in pencil. And then this was transferred over to the actual uh, MM18 blank. And then paint and redraw it there. But the beauty of it is I get to keep all the fur limbs, <laughs> right? So if I ever want to do another one or blow it up, put it on a sketch cover or anything, I have them. So I actually have a stack that Michael Monshaw was making fun of me of all my comps for sketch cards that were APs. Right, here's the carbon transfer from another one that I sent out the sketch. Oh, here's another perfect example. I did this guy on a live stream. It was a blob like pencil in there. Yeah. It wasn't meant to be a card, but then somebody commissioned wanted a blob AP based on this. So yeah, I took it to Photoshop, scaled it, actually made it work as a landscape as a sketch card. And then that's the printed version that you can still see the pen lines from the carbon transfer to the part. Now, one thing that you, like, I'm sure you've seen on Instagram and YouTube and 
whatever these guys to do the hyper realistic uh like celebrity portraits and whatnot yeah um some of them will use a grid method but i will put money down on the fact that most of them will do a carbon transfer from a photograph the baselines and then just shake from there there's nothing wrong with it i just wish more people would admit that they do it <laughs> um that's still dry yeah uh, I'll just give you an example of what I was on about. That's oh yeah, and yeah, but those are pretty tight pencils, right? Yeah, they start off quite uh, loose, but uh, I tend to build on it with uh, layers to get an idea of sort of like definition, because you know pencil doesn't always show up well on the uh, camera or film. So right, um, I do it as best I can. Um, there's the Spider Man with the in the reflection of Mysterio's helmet. So it was it was good for me to sort of sketch these out to sort of like get a feel of the size. And what the, the one in the I bottom right, in. you did that as well, right? This one? Yeah. Yeah, I've uh, just showed that one today actually. Yeah, okay. I thought it looked familiar. Uh, there's the Nick Fury ones that recently did. Yeah, okay. And uh, Vulture in the corner. Less we say about that. <laughs> so then, so w w you do that, and then what do you do? You just redraw it freehand? Yeah, just redraw it freehand. Um, I kind of, as a kid, I used to watch the uh, cartoons as a kid. I used to record them on my VCR, and uh, I used to then uh, replay the cartoons. I'd, I'd either watch them or I'd replay them pause them at certain points and then try and draw what was on the screen. Oh, okay. So I kind of got quite good at it. That's why my style's quite similar to um, Bruce Timm's Batman animated in a way. It's um, how I sort of self-taught myself to draw in that way. Cool. So uh, for those watching that don't know what a VCR is, <laughs> <laughs> video recorder yeah God. this is an old, old school yeah an old device that looked like a dvd player but player, thicker, yeah that you put these giant cassettes in and uh you could record them so similar to a cassette that you would have in a older car stereo both for video I can't believe that I felt the need to explain what a VCR is. Yeah, I forget how old I am sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and how much technology has changed over the time. Um, VHS or Betamax? VHS. <laughs> Jalen wants to know. <laughs> yeah, Gordon he's would. been doing the same thing. He's just redrawing from his sketches from a sketchbook, which I think he, he showed uh, when uh, he was on the stream. Um, yeah, he, he, he does a lot of sketch dumps, doesn't he? he yeah, does a, a lot of preliminary sort of sketches for poses. Yeah, we've all got his own sort of way of doing it, but we all seem to. Um, well, it works for each individual, doesn't it, in the end? Yeah. There's no uh, right or wrong way. It's just different. Yeah. I mean, but, from commission uh, side of it, it is nice to be able to slow down and be able to have a bit more um, thought process and you can sort of like work out some of the issues you may have not come across until you start putting pencil to paper as well. Yeah. Well, it um, helps support. Um, the but, I mean, the, the time is, plays a huge factor, right? Like, I'm working yeah. on a set now. I still got, I got 35 parts of doing like two and a half weeks. I just start drawing and then I go paint. And then if it looks like a bag of potatoes, it looks like a bag of potatoes. Moving on to the next one. <laughs> 
with an AP, um, then it's a different story. Yeah. Me, I'll go back to that. You see the uh, middle top? It's got a cross in it. Yeah. So that was one that I just decided I didn't like the angles. I didn't like um, the anatomy of Spider-Man in the background. So I was just like, right, I'll dismiss that one. I think it was a reproduction of a uh, sketch cover in a way as well. I just couldn't get it to work how I wanted it to work. So I, I dismissed it pretty much straight away. It's sometimes how it works. Mm. Just in case anyone watching saw that before and uh, had questions on why there was a big cross in it. Mm. We can make and mistakes. Gordon says, <laughs> uh, Gordon says he does the pencil, then moves on to the next. He works in batches. Like he'll do a bunch of pencils, then inks. And colors. I mean, yeah, and everybody's got their own way of doing it. Yeah. Uh, when I first started, uh, I was given advice. Um, from a fellow sketch card artist, and he said, uh, try and get 10 cards done in one week. So pencils, inks, colours, you know, 10, 10 cards in pencil, 10 cards in inks, and then colour the 10 up. At least then you've got your 10, uh, first 10 finished, rather than all pencils, then do all inks, and then do all colours. I've tried that in the past, uh, where I've sort of like gone, right, well, I've done 10, I'll do another 10. Uh, and it's sort of like it's a bit tedious when you're just doing constant colours. You know, sometimes it is better to break it up. It uh, helps that bit of fatigue when you're uh, trying to... Yeah. Uh, there, there's a psychological element to it as well. Yeah. Mm. But, and I, I, I've said on other streams, I just want to paint. Like I'm just in a hardcore paint mode now, so I just rush to get to paint as fast as possible. Um, and th th that's another reason why I stopped doing um, like preliminary sketches that I transfer over or redraw on the sketch on the inserts. Just mm -hmm. like personally for me, it seems to work most of the time. Is just do a rough sketch and then clean it up with paint after which doesn't apply with markers because it's not like you can go over and redo a hand half an hour from now if you don't like it. No, it's a different ball game. I, you can probably go, is it Todd Nock? I've seen some of his videos where he's used markers and he says sometimes it's better to do lighter colors because then you can, uh, if you may want to change it, you can always go darker. Um, yeah, which is same with watercolor, right? That you can always darken it, but you can't go lighter. But, no. um, hang on, on that point, something that I'm going to do sometime soon. Don't worry about it. So, yeah, uh, so put the camera back up. It was just the cards in the box that's holding up the camera because I have a really high-tech setup. So, are we back in? So I have this um, Vulture AP from Black Panther that I did. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, I, this is one of those points, like at the point where I started, hey, you know what, let me try acrylics. So I don't hate it, but I don't love it. And there hasn't really been uh, a lot of interest in it. Because, I mean, really, it's just doesn't really speak to, I guess to your point earlier, it doesn't really speak to the character. Yeah. Um, like besides the green thing and some feathers, but you can't really tell it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this to Magneto because I like the expression. But I'm going to draw draw a helmet over, I could probably do now, and paint over the whole thing. Can't paint, draw with that. 
I thought that's the that's the advantage of the paints versus uh, the markers or watercolors is I can just take this and completely I'm about to murder this culture. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to apologize for Webhead Wednesday in advance. Oh, dear. <laughs> Are we good on time? Um, yeah, you tell me when you got to go. I got. I can do maybe another half hour before I got to hit the road. Um, I may have to cut it. I'm going to... I mean, we've been on for a while, so like over an hour and a half. So you tell me when you're gonna go. Still there? Yeah, yeah, here. Right, it's okay. Uh, my phone battery's about to die on me. Oh, okay. Um, Give me a right, second. So I might be able to just get half an hour in. Technical this. difficulties, people. Shoot. This might be more complicated than I thought. What's up? So I got really fancy when I did this card and I varnished it, and now it's hard to see the pencil lines over. I might have blown myself a little bit. Son. Okay, so let me know when you gotta pull the cord. Um, now it's, what time is it there now? Like ten thirty? <laughs> Five to eleven. Oh, okay. it's past my bedtime. Um, well, the, doing um, sketch cards has helped. I actually stay up quite late. Well, you, you have little ones, right? Yeah. I'm not sure they was in bed long before this started. No, but I, I'm sure it limits the amount of time you have during the day to do stuff, so you got to uh, work on stuff late at night. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a good balance. I don't know about uh, you, but if I'm not drawing, I'm usually thinking about what I can be drawing. Yeah, I'm really, um, I mean, a good thing that came out of COVID, for me anyways, um, is the fact that I did get to spend more time on uh, on my art. I, like right when um, everything hit the fan here, um, something's really crackling. I don't know if you, I mean my end or yours? It could be me because I've got the, uh, I can hear it from my end. Before I had the headphones in, I can't have the charger and the headphones in. Oh. Um. Uh, if you want, we can call it quits for today. We can always pick up another time. Yeah, uh, up to you. Just like it's, I can't really hear you with the crackling. Yeah. 
Uh, we can pick this up another time. I can uh, continue this guy on another stream if you prefer. Oh, up to you. I mean, whatever you want. You can finish this guy. Yeah, don't mind. I've enjoyed it. Um, whatever we need to do. Um, yeah, it's before thanks for taking the time. Thanks for joining in on this. It was fun. It was great chatting with you. Uh, if anyone wants to hit up Paul for some permission, so many please. Uh, Paul Hill Art on Facebook. Paul J Hill underscore Art on Instagram. Um, he's ready and willing, right? <laughs> right. Um, that's about it. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Do you have any parting words of wisdom? Uh, sorry, say that again. Do you have any parting words of wisdom? Uh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> put me on the stop. It's put me on the spot, even. <laughs> Just keep practicing. It's if okay to say no. <laughs> uh, right on. Okay. Well, thanks again. Thanks, everyone, for join, joining in. Um, I have some other artists lined up. Um, going to announce them as we confirm the times. If anyone's watching that ever wants to hop on a stream, drop me a message. Paul, hope to do this again. Definitely. And uh, yeah, if, yeah, if you want to stick, on, stick around for a second before I kill the stream, uh, like don't close your tab. That's it. Thanks, everyone. Bye.